All right, guys, so welcome back to round six of the F1 2010 career mode for the Monaco Grand Prix. Of course, always one of the special races on the F1 calendar. So, uh, yeah, we've had a couple of um, disappointing results. Hopefully, we can uh, turn around the season here in Monte Carlo. Uh, also, I decided to um, change my helmet design because so far I've been using a, a standard plain red helmet, which um, isn't terrible, but it's a bit basic. Um, so I decided to uh, to change it, but I was looking through the helmets and we've got pretty much Well a lot of countries and especially the European countries and every country around the Netherlands like Germany and the UK and Belgium You've got Scotland which isn't even a country, but there's no Dutch helmet So uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely unacceptable. So I just decided to go for the Hungarian helmet Just because it's the closest one to the Dutch helmet. We're just gonna pretend like the green stripe on the bottom is a blue stripe um, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, it won't really make a difference from TCAM anyway. So that's going to be the helmet for the rest of this season. Because um, I just think that it looks a little bit better than the standard red helmet. And yeah, I'm just going to pretend like it's a Dutch helmet. Because I just don't get why there is the Dutch helmet in the game. Anyway, this is practice. Uh, you can see it started off very, very well. I uh, had a very weird spin there where I touched the wall coming out of the tunnel. And now, coming into the back, I start to go flying almost, as I completely make a wheelie into the wall there on the outside of the back. So, um, yeah, that was a very uh, odd physics there. But, uh, yeah, we're just trying to build up our pace a little bit. This is, of course, quite a difficult circuit, especially on the pad, but uh, I was able to uh, find my feet a little bit here. Currently a P17. With a 120 on blade, that's still a very slow lap time. That's a good one. We get up into wheels there as I uh, try to find a way past on Lewis Hamilton. Anyway, we did uh, start to um, gain a bit of consistency. Still on the 121s, which is still very slow, but we are steadily improving. Now up to a 119.9, which uh, moves us up into P13. And... Um, Coming into the Nouvelle Chicane, trying to uh, get as close to the walls as possible. And this time I actually managed to string around a pretty good lap, which currently puts up into fourth. 117.993. I was doing quite a few laps. This is already our ninth lap as I lose the back end and crash into the wall, lose my front wing. Very uh, easy mistake to make. So I have to uh, return back into the pit lane to uh, get all of that uh, repaired. But, um, yeah, I'm still kind of annoyed that there isn't a Dutch helmet in the game, but I'm just going to have to go for the Hungarian one. I will actually visit Hungary this year to go to the F1 Grand Prix with uh, Sandro and Dion. And also, actually, my... Um, uh, nice. That's, again, a very weird crash there on the uh, entry of uh, Rescas. And again, another crash exiting turn one. Uh, this time, we were actually facing the wrong way, so I tried to... Uh, flick spin the car around to get going again and I actually got a five place grip penalty for dangerous driving So that's uh, a bit of a setback because of course the grip position is very important right work out But uh, no, what I was about to say also my favorite pianist is from Hungary actually. He's called Peter Benz So I guess I have a bit of affinity with Hungary uh, and it will visit for the first time this year. So uh, so yeah anyway uh, practice, I think we ended up in like P8 or something. No, it was actually six plays that we ended up in. Only uh, three tenths behind the fast lap. So the pace is looking uh, a lot better than what it did in Barcelona. So that's uh, very promising. Anyway, instead of qualifying now, this is our first lap. And I lock up into turn one and smash into the wall here in Saint -de -Vault. We can confirm you have a left front puncture. A left front puncture. And I can actually confirm that both the front tires are punctured. Not only the left front, so uh, I was actually very lucky to not um, crash out there and terminate the damage to the car. Because, uh, yeah, we've lost the front wing and we've punctured both front tires. So that's pretty much the maximum amount of damage before actually losing the wheel. So I was pretty lucky there. We we're going to have to uh, nurse this car back into the pits. But that is our first run. Completely uh, ruined, of course, in qualifying. But there's still a bit of time left, so no stress. But yeah. That's what happens when you lock up into turn one. Anyway, this is my second attempt. Well, I just actually did a lap, a 119, but it's, it was very much a banker lap and still very slow. So this time we're actually going to probably go for it. As we uh, go into the casino section, 
trying to get as close to the wall as possible here. You can see leaving absolutely no wall margin with the wall. They're actually touching the wall there slightly. But we are improving by six tenths to go into the Lowe's hairpin. You can actually see that the, we are actually turning more than what you can do on other tracks. It's like we use a special steering rack here, which is actually pretty realistic since I do that in real life too. So we can uh, have a couple of more degrees of rotation in the turn-in. Going underneath the tunnel now. Got a lot of the sound as well echoing in the tunnel there. I'm turning that's a pretty good sound model actually. As uh, Vettel gets in the way there, I actually cut the corner and I look back and I lose the back end and crash into the wall. So that was very annoying. Uh, I was I was a bit distracted by Vettel, but I shouldn't have been distracted that much. I should have just carried on without looking around. So I had to come into the pits again, repair the damage again. That cost me so much time that this is now my final uh, take on a lap because we only have one minute remaining. So there's a final chance to actually get a lap in. As again, we're leaving absolutely no marsh with the wall. They're just flying through it. Just time avoiding the wall there on the exit. We're going to Mirabeau, five tens up as we lock up a little bit there into uh, the Mirabeau section. But yeah, this will be our only shot at a decent lap time. So hopefully we can uh, string this one together without making mistakes. Currently, Fernando Alonso pole position with a 117.1 as we go underneath the tunnel once again. And uh, coming up to the new Welsh chicane, breaking just after the 100 meter board, back down into second gear. You can actually cut this corner a little bit without uh, invalidating the lap time. Getting close to the wall again on the exit. So now skip to the end of the lap. 117 to beat, we come up to the line, we do a 117.0, and that's good enough for pole position. So uh, still right at the end of the session, we did manage to pull out a pretty good lap time. And uh, pole position in Monaco. That is, of course, a very, very nice way to start this weekend. And uh, crucial as well to start the race. Uh, from sixth place, because we do, of course, have that five place group penalty, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. But, uh, yeah, still sixth place. Pretty good uh, position to start from here as uh, I was distracted a little bit there. Hey, Nick, over here. Sorry, David. Finish tomorrow. Is the car as strong in race trim as it was in qualifying? Well, hopefully, but I'm not sure if it is actually because so far we have actually performed a little bit better in qualifying in the races. So, um, yeah, we do have the pole position, but it's going to be difficult. They call this the jewel of the Formula One crown, and every driver says they want to win in Monaco more than at any other track. Do you feel the same way? To be honest, I kind of do because even though I've races worth the same amount of points. The fact that Monaco is part of Triple Crown as well definitely makes it special. You've been with Toro Rosso for a few months now, so you've had plenty of time to get used to your new team. How are you getting on with the guys so far? Oh, pretty good. I mean, I do like the team. I like the livery. So that's the main thing, isn't it? <laughs> anyway. That's it for our practice and qualifying. And uh, let's now uh, go into the race and see what we can do from 6th place on the grid for the 6th round of the season here in Monaco. So, Fernando Alonso on pole position ourselves in P6 and Sebastian in P15. So Rupert's got the uh, confidence that we can do better here. Let's see what we can actually do here as the lights are coming on red. And we're off after a very long wait <laughs> for the sixth round here in Monte Carlo. Getting off to a pretty decent start. We, uh, try to find a gap here up the outside of uh, Felipe Massa there who uh, holds the inside line there into Sandevold. He does have a bit more legs on this little straight there that pulls away from us. So uh, we settle into P6. As a look at that at the front and the Tariq Larens take each other out and I smash into the back of James Button who is bouncing around and uh, we've already got a bit of damage. So uh, yeah, Sebastian Vettel's got passed as well but what a bizarre situation there with the two McLarens tangling up with each other there in uh, the casino section so um, yeah we uh, have dropped back to P8 unfortunately the the damage is pretty light so we don't actually have to pit straight away as we try to go on the outside of Sebastian Vettel here on the start of lap 2 oh 
hang on, we're still going side by side. I'll go to the front ring later. Uh, Abdi set up Vettel here in two. We can see in a section. He went the inside for the second part. And we tried to hold it, but Vettel maintains the position. As you said, the front wing two are the plus position to compensate for the damage. Abdi inside into Mirabeau. And this time, we do get the move done as Vettel can't attack us back into the Lowe's hairpin. Uh, but. Um, yeah, we will lose a couple tens per lap with that damage. And of course, we will have a slower pit stop as well. So that's a bit annoying. But we are pretty fortunate, I think, to not uh, lose our front wing completely there. As we now catch up to Lewis Hamilton, giving him a bit of a tap there on the exit. Now the inside into Mirabeau as well. This time we do it a bit more cleanly, but I do lose the back. And I actually pretty much make Hamilton come to a complete standstill there because uh, I lost the back end completely and had to jump on the brakes and Hamilton had nowhere to go. So. That lost me a bit of time to the group of France. Oh, hang on. Yeah. I uh, made a similar mistake as in qualifying. It was very weird because I, I think I grazed the wall and that made my front wheels actually fly up into the air. And that meant that I couldn't slow down anymore. So we have smashed the same default ball yet again. As, and now I'm just causing problems for everyone. Antonio Lewis, who loses his front wing because I'm going so slow without my front wing. But um, yeah, this is not ideal, of course. We have lost our full front wing but luckily we were close to the pit window so we won't have to make an extra pit stop as I actually I'll break myself into the box and I accidentally uh, run into my pit guy so yeah that's not ideal this is gonna be a 10 or even 11 make that 12 second pit stop and that has uh, dropped us all the way back to P23 as we exit the pit lane now and look at that there is a massive pile up on the exit of the pit lane I run into Timo Glock I uh, don't know what is going on here, but uh, it is like a car park and everybody has stopped on the exit. So uh, that is uh, quite a few free positions for us. But of course, I did come to a standstill, which made me lose a lot of time. And now until lap nine, um, you know, of course, I've lost touch with all of those drivers that I was around in the first team because I had the longer stop and the wait there on the, on the pit end exit. But yeah, that was so bizarre. Just everybody was stopped there on the exit. And again, I hit the ball there and I make the same mistakes in practice. But this time I do sort of keep it straight and luckily don't, don't damage the wing again. But that's so weird. I just grazed the wall and that just turned my car into, well, more than a 360 before starting thinking out again. It, it's very weird physics in this game. Anyway, P15 now behind Nico Rosberg, who is also having a tough time in the Mercedes. Um, as we go up the inside of the mirror, but we actually touch him, spin him round, and now uh, the track is blocked. So, sorry, Nico. It looks like he isn't really going to shift as well. He's just going to stay there. He's, I think he's rage quitting, maybe. <laughs> and uh, now uh, even Bruno Senna has overtaken us. So, yeah, again, I'm uh, sort of falling into the same habits as in the previous races. I'm just making too many mistakes, which is very easy to do for us around here. And again, the pace is actually pretty decent. I mean, we even have pole position, but I'm just completely um, making a mock of it here in the race. And uh, already uh, points seem to be pretty impossible from this point, already on lap 11. So yeah, anyway, coming through at the back, we are catching up to the HRT again as we shoot. Let's just try and, um, yeah, recover this race as much as possible. Going on the outside of Senna, who squeezed us into the wall. Now we're just... Um, yeah, basically glued to each other there on the exit of uh, the swimming pool chicane. Again, we were fortunate to uh, not damage our wing. On to lap 12, I am getting uh, kind of held up behind Senna now because he is uh, starting to get in the way a little bit. But this is our strong point in the braking zone of Mirabeau. We do get past him into P14. There's quite a big gap to Heike Kovalainen though. As when I skip to the penultimate lap, coming into the low zero. But I actually look up the front and smash into the wall. And Bruno Senna smashes into me. So, another incident, and yeah, I'm sorry to Senna as well, he just lost his front wing because I came to a stop. On to the last lap, we are in P14, and I hit the wall again, and I lose my full front wing. Karun Chenna gets past me, because he gets past me, Timo Glug smashes into my rear wing and loses his front wing as well. Um, and now we've got Nico Rosberg again behind us. Man, this race is just been uh, yeah full of mistakes and at the end of the race we finish in p16 after lap 16. so again it's uh yeah so annoying that we have had so many races now outside of the points well done i'll see you back at the garage
I think this is no points in three races for us. 84 seconds behind the winner. But even further behind than in the previous episode. We gotta score points again, because we just can't keep doing this. Also, we're just gonna lose reputation as well. And, you know, we are still pretty early on in the season, but if we're gonna get to the end of the season and we're gonna have to contract talks and all that, we can't continue not scoring points if we want to go to a top team, which is my goal. So uh, we do gain a little bit. Of course, we do gain some levels because of the objective we got in qualifying by qualifying on pole. But yeah, I'm just sorry, guys, for all of these uh, disappointing rounds because three races out of the points is um, yeah just not good enough, even in a Toro Rosso. So um, yeah, let's see what they've left to uh, say about that. No, absolutely not. I mean, the only thing we can be happy about is qualifying, but. Uh, the race could have been better. The team appear to have been putting in the hours recently to give you a race winning package. Are you happy with their performance so far this season? I mean, I'm happy with the team efforts. I can't blame them. We're well into the season now, so you've had plenty of time to settle into your new team. How's life at Toro Rosso treating you? Pretty good. It's a decent team. And um, yeah, it's been due to my own doing really that we haven't had the results. So, yeah. This has been it for Monaco. The next round is going to be at Istanbul for the Turkish Grand Prix. Let's hope that we can um, fight for a top 10 position again. Anyway, um, I have been seeing the, the feedback and the comments on the previous episode, so I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, despite the results, I am actually enjoying the series, but let's hope that we can enjoy the racing as well from this point onwards. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.